Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Algebra 1 SOL prep video. Once again, this is intended to help you pass the SOL, Algebra 1 SOL. I'm not uh, attempting to teach you Algebra 1 at this point. So, first one, what values of x are solutions of? And they give you an equation. So I come over here. I type my equation in. I'm going to turn this on. And look, it provides two vertical lines. Again, it has an x squared, so you expect two solutions. So right here and right here. And so I see negative 5 as one of my x values and 1.33. Uh, the only one that has negative 5 is this one. You may have to enter this into your calculator to confirm that that's 1.333 repeating, right? But this is your solution, negative 5, and this is 1.33 repeating. Okay. Next one, graph of the line L is shown. So they've got line L labeled and graphed right here. Which number is closest value to the slope of the line? Remember, slope, rise over run. So we need two points. I'm going to pick points that hit corners. I'm not going to hit pick this point here or this point here. I'm going to start with this point because that hits where the grid lines meet. It's going to make it easy for me to count. I'm going to follow this line that they've graphed until I get to another corner where grid lines meet. Now I just have to count. I start at the point on the left, go down one. So that's my rise. I went down one, so it's a negative one over. Look, there's only one answer that has negative one in it. But just for fun, we'll go ahead and count the rod, the, uh, the run over one, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, we get negative one, six. System of the linear equations is graphed as shown. Here's the system of equation. Here's the graph. They didn't even need to give you the equation because they provided the graph for you. So system of equations. The solution is where the two lines meet. Of course, if the two lines are parallel and they don't meet, then there is no solution. This one, however, they do meet. You do have a solution. It is the point 3 and then negative 7, right? Always x coordinate first, then y. Okay, got to be careful here that you don't reverse it. They're going to catch a few people that are a little bit careless with the negative 7 and the 3. It's always x, y. All right, here we go. Bowling problem. Uh, game costs two fifty dollars per game, and you're going to rent the shoes for $1.50. So I'm going to build a table here. You can do this algebraically, or you can just do it mathematically. So I'm going to build a table, number of games, and cost. All right. If we bowl one game, remember, we are going to have to pay for the bowling shoes once. Right. It doesn't say $1.50 per game. It just says you're going to rent the bowling shoes. Plus, you pay $2.50 for the first game. So bowling one game is going to cost you $4. Now, when you go to game two, you don't pay for the shoes again. You pay for those, but you do have to add another $2.50 because you're going to bowl another game. So I'm going to add 250. So now we're up to 650. Game number three, I add another 250. Game number four, I add another 250. Game number five, I add another 250. Game number six, I add another 250. But I only had $16 to spend. Bowling six games costs more money than I have. So I can't go that far. I'm going to have to stop at game five. All right. Malik can spend no more than $24. So he has to spend. He has to spend less than or equal to. $24. Now, what does he spend? Well, he spends $6 per pound 
for the pecans. Pecans has been labeled as the X, so that's going to be 6X. $8 per pound for cashews. Well, cashews is your Y, so that's 8Y. So 6X plus 8Y has to be less than or equal to $24. Over here, I have that graph. So this one, we had to do some, some work. We had to do some algebra to come up with the inequality. But once you have the inequality, you just plug it in. It graphs it. Notice it's a solid line. If you didn't have the equals with it, if this equal signs wasn't here, it would be the dotted line version, right? But it has the equals, so we have a solid line, and it's shaded below it. So we have our answer right here, D. All right. <clears throat> Point a is an element of direct variation. All right, so the first thing you have to remember when it comes to graphs of direct variation is all of them guaranteed will hit the point zero, zero. So I'm going to plot that point right here. Direct variation. Graphs are lines guaranteed to hit zero, zero. So it says plot two points other than A that are elements of this direct variation. So I'm going to use this point A, and it's going to help me find another point. Well, I have to think about slope, because remember, there's, there's going to be a line that runs through this, and they said point A, because it said A was an element of it. So I'm going to count from A to here to get my slope. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. So my slope is 4. So from here, I'm going to count up 4 over 1. So there we go. I plotted one point. All right, it says plot two points other than A that are elements of this direct variation. I'm going to find another one. I'm going to repeat. Up 4 over 1. There we go. On the electronic test, you just click here and click here where I've bubbled them in. Or you could have clicked this one as well, right? You could have clicked this one and either one of those. I actually have three more points. All right, which graph has exactly one x-intercept and one y-intercept? Well, which one hits the x-axis once? Which one hits the y-axis once, right? Well, this line never hits the x-axis. It doesn't have an x-intercept. This one never hits the y-axis. This is the only one that has an x-intercept, sorry, y-intercept and x-intercept. This one never crosses the y-axis. Our answer is B. Which equation best represents this data set? So what I've done for us here is I've entered all that in. Okay, so I put it in a table. Remember to get the table, you hit plus and you hit table. Okay, so I entered all my data in a table and look, it graphs the points. They sure seem to make a curve. If I follow along those points, it seems to make a curve. So I'm not feeling really good about C or D because those don't have an X squared in them. I'm feeling like it's either going to be A or B. So look, that's a line. So I, you can see that's for choice D. That doesn't come close to matching them. It says which equation best represents? That one, not particularly good either. It doesn't hit any of the points. That one looks like a pretty good match. Eh, that doesn't hit any of the points. That comes closest to matching all my points. So that's going to be B. All right, the relationship between X and Y is shown in the table. Which equation represents this relationship? Sort of got the same thing going on here. Okay, so you can see I've got my data set in there. Right over here, right here. Got my data set entered, and I've got all four possibilities in. Now these 
Looked like there might be a little bit of a curve to it. It's tough to tell. Let's see. That one's not bad. I might come back to that one. Mm, that one doesn't look so good. Doesn't look to be going through all the points. Uh, that one hits all the points. That one only hits a couple. Well, they made this one easy for me because this one hits all the points. And got our answer. All right, Mr. Scott will pay two dollars. Miss Scott will pay to have pay two thousand dollars to have her house painted. The amount each painter earns A varies inversely for the number of painters N that will paint the house. So <clears throat> inverse variation, you multiply X and Y. Okay. Inverse is multiply. Direct is divide. Now, usually I think of it as x times y equals some number, some constant number. They're not using x and y. They're using a and n. So we're going to have a times n. And the constant number in this case is the $2,000. So we've got d. Okay. So basically, if you can remember that inverse is multiplying x and y, this is the only one that could possibly work. If they said direct, you'd have to have x, sorry, y divided by x. All right, so there we go. Out of all those problems, at least six of those did we solve just by using Desmos or the graph that they provided.